Hey, hello everyone, welcome back. So this is going to be a, a longer format video and it's going to be on colonic function, colonic health. <laughs> I know it's not the most interesting or the most um, awe-inspiring or sanitary or happy <laughs> topic to talk about, but it's extremely necessary because it's one of the biggest um, systems and important systems in the body. Uh, I heard this analogy a while back that your colon is like a switch system in your house. So you go to the toilet like every day. So if there's a blockage 20, 30, 40 meters down the road, that will all push back and come out the toilet and you will have it stinking and festering and polluting your house. So similar to your colon, if your colon is blocked, going to push back into your body and it's going to cause disease different other parts so your colon <clears throat> is linked to all different other body parts so if there's a problem in your colon in some area it will link back to another part of your body so let's start with the anatomy of the colon so first um, out of your small intestine your ilium uh, comes the cecum and in the cecum the cecum goes from your small intestine, the ileum, to the ascending colon, comes through the cecum. And in the cecum, there's also the appendix, then comes your ascending colon, then your transverse colon. So your intestine comes down and goes into the, the cecum, ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, then your rectum and your anus, which is also the, the sigmoid colon. <coughs> so that is the basic anatomy. That it goes in a u-shape so if your colon is not in that u-shape anymore you have a problem so that usually happens when the colon has been stretched or elongated or there's some disease or you've had constipation for a long period of time um, it can also happen after pregnancy because things move around in the body but after exercise and some careful management it should return back to normal so if your lifestyle what you eat the things that you do outside if that um, corresponds to healthy living then your colon can return to its original place its original structure the u-shape and you can be healthier again so let's get into the different functions of these parts so we've gone through the different parts, the shape, that it corresponds to different other body parts. So let's get into the nitty gritty details. So the first part that I'm going to talk about, the appendix. So the appendix uh, has been written off as some useless part that has no function and it can just be taken out at will. But in fact, there's research that shows that people whose appendix has been removed have a higher risk of colonic cancer and have a higher rate of colonic cancer. So this appendix is really important. Um, it is the gatekeeper, if we can call it that. It stops your fecal matter from pushing back into your small intestine. It also secretes an oily lubricant that helps the stool and the fecal matter move out of your colon into the toilet, I hope. <laughs> I think most people go in the toilet, but out of your body through your anus. <clears throat> So it also sends a signal to your brain that you are ready to go to eliminate your waste. And you should obey this signal because if you do not, um, it will compact, more fluid will be absorbed and the remaining stool or fecal matter will become hard, compressed and you will have trouble passing it and it can also then cause damage inside of your colon. When your feces or your stool is in your colon for a, a longer period of time than it should be, it can start to rot and putrefy and it can then start damaging the mucosa lining, it can damage the cells and it can really cause some disease. Um, your colon is also formed in pockets, so little pockets which are muscles that will contract to move your stool along. So from both sides these pockets will contract almost like a jellyfish moving so it will contract so that your stool is constantly moving and this contraction 
will also then absorb uh, minerals and vitamins and water. Your colon is where a lot of the water and the fluid gets absorbed and it's where the fluid balance and the electrolyte balance in your body is kept and maintained. So electrolytes also excreted and absorbed here. So it's an extremely important organ. So these <clears throat> folds in the colon, they also need to be maintained in the correct shape. If there's too much stool bulk and stool is trapped in there, the, these folds change shape and this can then form diverticuli which are like little bubbles that bulge out of your colon and then fecal matter goes and sits in there for long periods of time and then it can cause inflammation and it can cause diverticulitis and if these diverticuli burst then you have an extremely dangerous situation because this putrid rotting festering waste is released into your body in your in, into your intestinal cavity and this can then cause severe damage um, infections <coughs> and it can cause extreme damage so it's important that you answer the call of nature go when your body says you need to go do not hold it in um, because this can be damaging to your body so your appendix is this the body part that signals when you need to go to the toilet it will also lubricate the stool so that it can move more easily and it will also help your anal sphincter to either relax or contract so to actually get the stool out of your body so this is an extremely important part then uh, yeah, I'll get to the position that you should be using the toilet in later when we talk about the anus and the rectum or the sig sigmoid colon. So your cecum is also there to control the sphincter so that your, your stool doesn't pass back into your intestine because that could also be harmful because the intestine is not created to have this fecal matter in it and it can damage the cells and the lining and cause some damage. Then if your stool is also too acidic, it can burn or it can damage the lining of your stomach. So that also happens when you eat certain kinds of food. So it would be better to eat extremely high fiber foods, high fiber, high fluid, high electrolyte, high minerals, high vitamin foods, so that it goes through your body quickly, easily. Your stools should be soft and smooth, like soft serve ice cream. It should not be hard, it should not be round and balls. It, there are many different kinds of stools. You can look up the Bristol stool chart. <coughs> shows you every single different kind of stool that you can get. Um, it should not be painful to pass a stool either. It should be, I guess, comfortable and it should go out easily and without a problem. <laughs> Then let's move on to the next part. So coming out of the uh, ilium, cecum, appendix is here on the side, going up to your transverse uh, ascending colon. So in your ascending colon, you're absorbing your water, your fluid, your electrolytes. You can also produce some vitamins and you also absorb vitamins. So you can produce um, the B vitamins, some B vitamins, vitamin K, biotin, and then bacteria. So there are studies that you can produce vitamin B12 in your colon. The bacteria in your colon can produce B12. I have that research. I can give that research to you. I have the paper. So it is possible. They just don't know if you can absorb that. But the textbooks will tell you these um, vitamins, biotin that is produced in your colon is absorbed. They'll specifically tell you the vitamin K, the biotin, and some of the other B vitamins can be absorbed into your bloodstream. They, however, will not tell you about B12 because I could not find any studies that specifically focused on that and specifically talk about the B12 being absorbed. But it could be possible in theory because it's created, it's made by the bacteria in your colon, so why would it, wouldn't it be absorbed in the same way as vitamin K and biotin and the other B vitamins are absorbed. 
why couldn't B12 also be absorbed there? Just because it doesn't work in the same way as in your stomach, it doesn't mean it's not possible. So in your stomach, B12 needs intrinsic factor and an acidic environment. In your colon, it might work a different way, but it can still then be absorbed. It's just something to note. Then your ascending colon is also working to form and propel your feces further on the stool and it works with peristaltic movements. So the same as your throat going down into your stomach, into your intestine, it's all peristaltic movements. So smooth muscle contractions, rhythmic smooth muscle contractions. So rhythmic, this rhythmic muscle contraction is important. You don't want spastic movements. Um, there's also a disease called spastic colon. So you get these random contractions, extremely painful and dangerous. This is not something that's normal. So it's rhythmic, slow, natural contractions to move the feces. Then in your transverse colon, it's also having these movements to form the stool and to move it down into your descending colon where it's getting ready to be um, moved out of your system, excreted. So in the ascending colon, transverse colon, all the absorption is happening, the bacteria is, is making some good nutrients for your body and it's released and it's being absorbed. Electrolyte movement is taking place, the fluid movement is taking place because <clears throat> um, your potassium, sodium and chloride exchange is happening. So to balance out your body's levels of, of those. So if you eat too much salt, eat too much sodium, this, will, uh, this exchange will then happen in your colon and it can cause dehydrating effects and it can then damage the cells because for sodium to move chloride has to move potassium has to move so you're disrupting the electrolyte balance and your colon has to um, try and balance this again and can cause some problems in your in your body as well it can cause edema which is swelling because it will pump fluid into your cells so your because your cells don't have the correct electrolyte balance, the positive and the negative balance, so it will pump fluid into it when that balance is out of sync and it can cause your cells to then swell too much and burst and die off. So it can cause cellular death and it can cause extreme swelling as well. <clears throat> so water moves via osmosis and the electrolytes are important because this osmotic effect happens over the positive and the negative balance that is being kept in your colon. So this is important. So chloride is also exchanged for bicarbonate. This is to maintain the pH balance, specifically in your colon and also in the rest of your body. So this is working together with breathing, oxygen and carbon dioxide. So it's working together with that. It's working together with your digestive system, which is getting um, glucose in and is also excreting water and bicarbonate. <clears throat> then moving on to the descending colon. So your descending colon is where um, the feces or the stool or the poo is, is stored before it's um, moving out of your body. And it creates a bacterial environment to produce the vitamins and the minerals that your body can make. So this is also important to keep the balance of good bacteria. So there's good bacteria, there's bad bacteria. You want good bacteria to grow well. You don't want them to overgrow because that can also cause problems. So just not good growth but there's good and bad bacteria you want the good ones to grow and not the bad ones to grow if you have bad bacterial growth for example in your mouth you have bad breath if you have bad bacteria in your armpits you have smelly armpits smelly feet smelly breath that is bacteria that is either either overgrown or it's bad bacteria so when you eat certain things that are not good for your body you get these bad bacteria growing and the bad smells same with farts or wind coming out of your colon that is bad bacteria so it can either be your body that is killing or excreting the bad bacteria and it causes some winds or it can be things that you eat that is not being broken down quickly enough so it's creating wind as well and that is then coming out so extremely bad smelling winds means there's putrid dead stuff hanging around your colon which cannot come out and it's busy fermenting and the the wind the the, the smell the odor the gas is coming out and not the solid 
material. So if you have a lot of gas and a lot of smelly gas, then it means your colon has a problem. So you need to then eat high fiber um, laxative foods that will get it out. Okay, so where was I? Bacterial growth. We need adequate good bacterial growth and good bacterial um, colonization of our colons. They can transplant bacteria, fecal bacteria. You get a poo transplant, so they put back some feces with some good bacteria and then it can grow again. So this has been done all over the world to promote and better health. So then in your rectum or your sigmoid colon, um, you need the correct posture to get your feces out um, with the angle that your, your descending colon and your, your rectum is coming out, the sigmoid colon part. You need to squat to open it up so that the feces can come out. If you are not in the correct position, if you are just sitting normally, it pinches and you have to um, exert pressure to move that out. So then that can damage the, your anal sphincter, it can damage the cells, it can damage the, the descending colon and the sigmoid colon's muscular movement, the peristalsis, and that can cause piles, it can cause inflammation, it can cause pain, it can cause blood vessels to burst. It can also cause the diverticulitis, it can cause many different problems. It can also lead in the long run to colonic cancer. Um, because not all of your feces is being moved through it's and some damages occurs in the in the muscles so there are many different problems that can occur if you're not in the right squat position the squat position can be um, maintained if you have a toilet and you just put like a baby chair in front you know the, the little step chairs that children use to come onto the toilet you can plop your feet on there or just a little footstool Put your feet on there it lifts it up and then you can um, naturally have a bowel movement so in the in the east they have what's called a squatty toilet so it's just like a hole in the ground in the ground and this naturally makes you squat down opens up your your colon and then it can happen naturally so then i've talked about all these different diseases the muscle straining Fecal pushback can happen if you are not producing the bowel movement in the correct position. Fecal um, pushback can happen because you are you are pushing this part out. The muscle is contracting, so this one will go back, and then so it can cause pushback, which will cause <laughs> problems back in your um, in your ascending colon, in your appendix, and your cecum. So it can many things can take place if you are not in the correct position so then you need soft healthy soft serve stools to come out so things that can help your bowel movements there are herbs that can help I'll make a five and five video about some of those uh, high water intake fluid intake electrolyte intake high fiber foods um, fruits and vegetables psyllium husk uh, flax seeds, seeds in general are good and you don't want too much salt, you don't want too much protein, you don't want too much sugar and you don't want too much saturated fat and you also don't want processed carbohydrates. These all dehydrate, they cause a longer stay in your colon, longer transit time, they dehydrate you, they cause movement of your potassium, sodium, chloride, bicarbonate which can cause damage in different other parts of your body because all your fluid and your electrolytes are being moved around. It can cause cellular damage. So many things. So basically what you want to do, high fruit and vegetable intake, high water intake, high fiber intake, high antioxidant intake. Okay, so I hope you got some value from this. Uh, it's extremely interesting. If you enjoyed it, like, subscribe, share this video about and always stay healthy.